Hey, Andrew, uh, you are given one sentence you get to share with America about alcohol. Most healthy adults can safely consume there we go. one to two drinks per week before the negative effects of alcohol set to start to set in. You're cutting out. You're cutting out. You're cutting out. 100%. Cheers. Thanks for having me over. Thanks, Tom. You ever watch Lex Friedman's podcast? Uh, I've seen clips. I haven't like watched. I was supposed to do it, but I I don't think I I don't think I can. So I'm going to be in Red Rocks. He has the most thoughtful questions, where he says, "I'll do a Lex, I'll I'll do a Lex Friedman question." And by the way, I hope I doesn't. Sometimes I say things on this podcast that sounds like I'm shitting on people. Lex lives in Austin. No. Yeah. Does he really? He lives in Austin. Oh, then why don't I do his podcast when I'm in Austin? Hey, how about my invite, Lex? Yeah. What the fuck, Lex? He did a podcast with Tim Dillon that's really good. Really? And he did one with Mark Norman, and Mark Norman, you could tell Mark thinks he's bombing the whole time, because Mark normally bombs on podcasts. But uh, <laughs> but he's like... He was I... great when he did Two Bears. He's like, am I doing okay? Um, so, uh, Lex Friedman, this is ready. Okay. Tom, you don't talk much about depression, but I'm assuming you've dealt with it as an insightful man who has explored all aspects of his life well read what's your approach to depression jesus lex um you're right and i wasn't expecting to go there (laughs) you'd be good on lex friedman's podcast he did that to jordan friedman jordan friedman jordan peterson Peterson? Jordan Peterson? Uh-huh. Because Jordan Peterson's dealt with the depression. I guess he's talked about it. Yeah. And Lex Freeman did a great podcast. He does great podcasts. I, I'm i going to give you, like, not all of them are for me. Like, when you talk about talk to a scientist, and I yeah. know Lex Freeman's like an AE scientist or something. Isn't, Alex, isn't he like a... AE? Ma- is he a, but is he, isn't he also like a mathematician? Isn't he like, something. He's Russian. That's okay. That he's Russian, else. and he likes to party. He does? Well, he's like, I think he's like a together guy. Uh-huh. But he does like to party. He, dude, this motherfucker gets up. This is why I like Les Friedman. He inspired. What inspires you? Okay, Tom. Who inspires you these days? Different people inspire me. I, um, I, I pull it from different aspects. So, like, we talk about, um, you know, the fitness stuff. I get inspiration from. Give me names. Well, I'm writing them down. Give me names. First, Sean, Sean Nix, who I work with. Sean Nix, your uh, trainer and a great photographer. Great photographer. Great photographer. You yeah. really hit two birds with one stone. I really did. Two uh, caves with one bird. Two, Keep going. Two, uh, Mark Bell. Mark, he, smelly Mark Bell. Smelly Bell, yeah. Mark Bell had the best post the other day that I reshared. Can you go pull up Mark Bell? Uh, people say, go just go to his Mark Bell. He tagged me in it. It was so interesting because, you know, I'm so sensitive that the first time I heard of Mark Bell, go to Mark Bell, I was like, oh, he fucking hates Which one? Me. Right there, the one within the dead center, dead center. Right, that oh. one. Read, uh, can you read that? He read that, Tom. Yeah. Uh, I hear people say it's easier for you because you're rich, and it's easier for you because you're ripped. It's easier for you because you're on steroids, and they are right. Be rich, be less fat, be ripped, be on steroids. If you think something I have or something someone else has would make your life better, Better or easier, go and earn it or go get it. Race to zero followers, hashtag race to zero. Go back to the thing, go back to his picture, hit the picture, hit the tag. Who did he tag in that picture? Bert Kreischer. Oh, wait, that says YMA YMA Studios. Studios. Oh, you're right. Oh, and Bert Kreischer. Oh, it's a bunch of people. I thought it was just me. Yeah. And I was like, he just tagged me. Oh, yeah. And then I signed up to go do steroids. Yeah, yeah. The uh, Mark Bell. Mark Bell yeah. is super inspirational. You know, he used to be fat. I watched him blow out both his knees. Well, yeah, Maybe yeah. on two bears. He was he was muscular and fat, though. It's, it's important it's like to me. point out. I got it. I know. He was. I am that. Keep going. He was 330. 330? 330, a competitive, world-class power lifter. And he, um, so that, that body that you see was under another like 100 pounds. No, no, no. I know. That's, that's what, what I'm is. saying. That's what mine is. That's what yours is. My, right? right now, if you subtracted all my fat, yeah. I would be pretty ripped. Right. Like, I'm muscular as fucking shit. Okay. Uh, I can do this with my pot, my shirt. Um, I mean, my fucking... Look at that thing. Jesus Christ. It's so much bigger than this arm. Yeah. 
think this one deal. I can't like my your this mom, is, the, you, this the, is the injured one. That bicep looks good. It's it. You know, that actually, that over, bicep actually looks good. Overcompensates for the other. Okay, the so injury. keep going. So Mark Bell, we're talking about inspiration. inspiration. This is the Lex Friedman inspired podcast. I mean, sexually, Rocco Sofredi, you know, oh. huge inspiration. Um, I want to play a game with Lex Friedman. Things I know that you don't know, and I guarantee we never saw it one night in Paris with Savannah Sampson. <laughs> I guarantee you, Lex Friedman. I, by, by the way, I need everyone to know I who think Lex Friedman so is. Fun. I think it's so fun if people, no, no one will do, it's like, you know, the whole thing, like, uh, it'd be great to just see everyone naked, you know, just to like, yeah. it would be so fun if people were completely transparent about their kinks and like what they're into. I think it'd be so fun to learn because people make assumptions, you know, about people, that'd be the best to learn that. Um, if you could put on a pair of x-ray glasses yeah and, and be like what are you all. what are you into and, and you just see that like someone's like you know I like that's choked, a fucking like... interesting movie pitch is a guy not who sees dead people but he sees, sees people and then you see like a and then you see them in their sexual thing they like what they like yeah he could like turn it on dog chains yeah man that'd be so fun right you just see me going say you love me and then the glasses and then the person turns to leanne and, and it just shows her going nope <laughs> nope do the dishes, motherfucker. Yep. Um, all right. Uh, so, Sexually, Rocco Sofredi. Absolutely. Okay. Um, uh, who are your biggest comedic inspirations? That's, I, I take a lot of inspiration at different times from different people. You know, Thank my you. favorite oh, thing to I thought you were going to say th me. Mm, uh, <laughs> I, my favorite thing to remember before I go on stage, because I forget, is I think I'm at my funniest as a stand-up on stage when I go, when I go on stage in a silly mood. Really? Silly for me is the is the best way it's like to you you loosen up your Rolex and go it's so loose. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel where like where are my Porskis? There's, there's, <laughs> I just feel like silly is 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 fun like playful yeah and like it's it's the best way for me to go on stage and I and I forget and the person that reminds me of that is actually Eddie Murphy because Eddie Murphy at, when he was like. 21 doing stand-up there was a silliness with which he uh, went on stage and so i try to rem remind myself of that like i'll just look at a photo of him just like i'm saying he was so masterful but there's like a that silliness is what i i aspire in, to to be like yeah um i took a lot of inspiration for you know i, I told you i funded and shot my own basically well not basically episode of television that i wanted yeah, to make yeah, yeah, yeah. i spent a fortune doing it how much Give me a give me a give me a price point on just low hands, like taps. What I spent on it? Yeah, dude, I sp I I sp right. I spent a million dollars on it. I can't wait to see this. It's it looks like more. First of all, I know what I know what forty grand looks like when you spend it because yeah. that was your dance video. Yeah, and that thing looked like a million dollars. Yeah, this I, is I gonna be legit. For real? Actually, more, but really, a little more, yeah. Fuck yes! And See, that's what I—that's where my head's but at. But that inspiration I got, no joke, for sure, of doing that was from Louis. God damn it! Because, you're gonna say me again? Because no, because I remember Louis, Horace and Pete. Well, it's not. It's that I talked to him a while ago. This is where I got the idea to actually. And who introduced you to Louis? Keep going. You introduced me to Louis. Thank you. Fucking finally. This whole thing, but, I'm just trying to get Bert written down. Okay, so, keep going with Louis thing. So I remember uh, talking to Louis once about, this is a while ago. Remember when we first started doing the live shows during the pandemic? Like, what, like when I was doing YMH Live? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I so, thought was like, Louis did them too? No, 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 no. So he, <laughs> he and I- He was in the middle of getting canceled during this. He and I talked uh, during that period after mm -hmm. we'd done a couple. And he goes, you know what you should do? Because I was like, they, they, these have become- very popular and they're, they're very successful and they're bringing in all this revenue because you need to take the profits from like one or a couple and actually spend that money on making something awesome so that when people go to the next one they're like oh it's it's not just the same show again you're you're raising the value yeah. so we started to do that within the live shows like every time we would do another live show we would spend more money on like the original content, like this sketch. It's like this last one spent like several hundred thousand dollars making okay. it. Okay, but I'm, then I'm already, I'm already writing down notes for our live show. 
about what we should do. Because, but it's and it, what you realize is that it it's worth it. It's worth it to for the entertainment value. But that I that conversation also made me go. I should take some of this excess that I'm making from touring and from and make something I want to make. And so that's why I wrote this show. Do you have a title for it? Uh, yeah, I don't want to say it. Yet. Okay, but um, for whites only. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's our water fountain is what it's called. Um, I used to have a joke about that. Really? You know, who was really upset about segregation. The guy making water fountains. Yeah, you know, he must have been like. Oh. They're going to drink out of the same one? I was selling them two at a time. Two at a time. <laughs> Keep going. Um, so that was, the, that was the inspiration to, like, I'd written this thing, and what I was going to do originally was just shoot one of these, like, short films that I wanted to make. Yeah. Because I'd done that before, and I was like, I'll just make one. And then I had that idea where I was like, you know what? I should, I should shoot this whole, make, make multiples, make it a television show. And I talked to uh, a producer and... You know, he gave me, I go, he goes, how much do you want to spend? I didn't say a million dollars. I said significantly less. He's like, I think we could do it for that. And then as we're getting into the production, it was like the price just kept going up and up. And at one point I was just like, I guess I'm in on this. Yeah. And uh, I've seen a couple cut. It looks, it looks. When do I get to see a cut? Should I, I should wait it to watch it when you're done. I think it would be most fun to show you it com like completely yeah. Yeah. done. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm going to love it regardless. I think you're going to laugh very very hard can i tell you and I, by the way i know i'm about, about to get in trouble with my my quote unquote team when i say this yeah so we were in a development deal that uh someone showed up and just was like hey man i'm i'm not ready and this is yesterday this was yesterday at the, in the meeting uh before the meeting they were like i i, I can't I, i'm not gonna make this meeting i'm not ready I don't from your my, team no 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 the someone in the, oh. in the, in the yeah i'm not ready uh, and by the way i'm in a few deals right now so if you think i'm talking about you i'm not Okay, because I know there's actually a couple, a couple people that there's one that just called me like a second ago who is also like, hey man, I can't make the meet. There's yeah. a lot of people. I think since COVID, a lot of people's idea of uh, what a work week looks is like is a little different than what it is. And so, uh, and so, by the way, and I'm also not talking about you. Okay, oh, oh, okay, motherfucker. <laughs> like I just realized there's another dude that's like, hold on. I thought we were cool. I told you yeah. I was. Yeah. So, uh, so. I, I said, I said, I, I literally in the meeting yesterday, this dude that I've I've wanted to work with this guy a couple times. He just was like, I'm not ready. I don't have the I don't have it thought out. I'm not there yet. And then I was just like, I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I literally said in the meeting, I'm out. I'm done. I'm not going to wait for Hollywood to make something because I have a project that it took a while to get the script. I have our project, which obviously we're still waiting for a script. I have this project where no one. Our project, by the way, um, Homeboy's coming out. I know. Yeah. I'm excited. I'm excited. But it's like, that's the way Hollywood works. There's an, and, and, and look, if anyone, Kale, right now, if Kale was listening, he'd go, oh, that's how Hollywood works. Yeah. It takes a while. Yeah. That's why it's, you know, oh, I got to, you know. But it's, and that's true. And it's true. But the, the thing me and you operate on is I'm not, I don't have to wait. Yeah. I sat in the meeting and I said, I have money. I want to make something. The thing I wanted that I pitched that everyone loved that I go, I just want to make it. And it's interesting because everyone has a different take. My business manager is like, let's do it. He's like, yeah, let's, I would love to double down on your money. Like that's the people that bet on themselves win the biggest. Yeah. But I, I drew inspiration from you because you were like, I'm going to make my own thing. And I was like, for real, and you legit made your own thing. Didn't put me in it, which is totally cool. I get it. You know, Hannibal's <laughs> a lot more talented than I am. But like, but again, I'm sure Mulaney was available. But yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, fucking, how come no one ever puts me in anything? Anyway, so, but I go, I'm going to fucking make my own thing. I'm going to make my own thing and just do it and write it for myself. But make, write it what makes me laugh. Uh, that's of course how to do it. Because, because even when we did the machine, I went through and if I didn't like a scene, I just rewrote it and was yeah. like, I take it to Peter and go, what do you think of this? And Peter and Kale. And they'd be like, love it. Let's do it. And I'd be like, great. And then, and so I, go, I was like, fuck it. I'm just going to do my own thing. I'll make it myself. I'm not going to spend a million dollars. But you are making uh, a show that you want to make? Well, it's so funny. The second I said, the second I said, I'm doing that in that meeting, literally on the car ride home, uh, Judy's like, Judy's like, uh, two meetings at your house on Friday. Fucking dot, 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 and dot, dot, dot. I, I'm still on your team if you want to make it, but let's make it with other people's money. 
And I was like, oh, I just want to make it. I'm just so tired of fucking Hollywood. By what the way. is it, though? Is it a show? Yeah, it's a sitcom. It's not okay. a sitcom. It's a single camera. I want to do a single camera sitcom where I, because I know what makes me funny. I know what, I know where I excelled in the machine. Mm -hmm. I wish I had more of it. I, in all honesty, that's my only regret is I'd never seen myself on anything. And now that I see myself on stuff, I go, oh my God, I'm funny here's, when I do here's that. Here's the part, though. That this is like, I mean, definitely take your meetings and have your, you know, conversations. Yeah. You know, yeah, you got to part with your own money when you spend your money. Yeah. But it makes it, a hundred percent your thing yeah. and your decisions and your choices and you don't have to consult or ask love it. anything and that's the advantage of spending your own money to do it see i would get can i be very honest i would want like it's so funny I, there are people that like if i say say i say i get a rogan deal and i get a hundred million dollars whatever <laughs> mm -hmm. The hundred and ten million dollars, whatever he got. Uh -huh. <laughs> Say I get a Rogan deal, I get a lot of money. Okay, right. there are people that I think are I I use the phrase worth their BMW, meaning everyone you pay in Hollywood, the first thing they do is they go get a BMW with right. money. Yeah. And so ultimately, you got to realize I'm paying people a bunch of BMW notes. Yeah, At the end yeah. of the day, I'm paying BMW notes. Yeah, yeah. So like, are you worth your BMW? Is the way I look at That's it. That's very and, funny. And there's people that are not worth their BMW. They're yeah, not. Yeah. That I, I see them in their BMW and I resent them as they pull into valet and I'm like, "That's a nice one. Five yeah. series." Yeah. Wow. The, the thing I, I go, you don't earn your BMW. Yeah. And you I gotta, know because I bought that. Fucking yeah. Movie. Yeah. And so you got to earn your BMW. And there's a dude I know. Kale earns his Range Rover. Yeah. Kale earns. Kale earns his like when you're and on actually, set with kale and kale actually at one time had a bmw that is gone <laughs> that is why he got his bmw stolen <laughs> hey man i bring it back tomorrow <laughs> all right i'm gonna smoke a cigar have all a drink right. i'll see you in 10 minutes hey dog uh, i'll bring it back hey man where are you Guys, it's no secret that women love beards and we love growing them. But having a great looking beard requires work. Whether it's beard growth oils, styling products, or a top of the line trimmer, there's a small army of products required to grow your best beard. Luckily, Beard Club is here to help. As the leader in beard first men's growth and grooming, Beard Club delivers quality hardware and consumables that will help you get a better, thicker, and fuller looking beard beard. I put in the, the beard balm. I go through a whole series when I trim and shave everything around here, the lines here, underneath, all thanks to the Beard Club stuff. Head on over to beardclub.com slash bears to take the beard quiz and use my code bears at checkout. They'll recommend a grooming kit that's tailored to your beard's needs. The growth kit features sprays to strengthen and moisturize your beard hair, oils that prime follicles for optimal growth, and a derma roller that rejuvenates dormant hair follicles. No matter what type of beard you have, Beard Club has the perfect kit to fit your needs. Beard Club, over 2 million beards served. Grow your best beard today and take 20% off your first order when you go to beardclub.com slash bears and use the code bears. That's beardclub.com slash bears, code bears for 20% off your first order. This episode of Two Bears, One Cave is sponsored by HelloFresh. With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. Have a packed schedule this fall? HelloFresh has meals covered with a weekly selection of 30 plus recipes and 70 plus convenience items all delivered to your door. Enjoy the freshest fall flavors. Every HelloFresh recipe includes ripe, just pick produce that travels from the farm to your door in less than a week. And you can easily customize your meals with Hello Custom by swapping proteins or sides, upgrading to choice proteins, or even adding protein to a veggie meal. It's never been easier to eat your way. It's great to get the fresh ingredients delivered to your door and to prepare a meal with the people you love and enjoy it together, knowing you did the whole thing from start to finish. Go to HelloFresh.com slash cave65 and use code 65 for 65% 65 off plus free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash cave65, promo code cave65 for 65% off plus free shipping. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Oh fucking! But Kale, like there are people I would hire that uh, that I go, that guy is worth, Peter Atencio. If I I would I would hire him, whatever he wants, I would pay to direct something. The way he directs, the, 
his the way he collaborates, the way he kind of works with someone. Yeah. I go, yeah, like that's a fucking bad That's the bitch. biggest thing is um, I love Alan Covert. Alan yeah. Covert is like a I'd work with him for the rest of my life. He just is a there are people that you go, they earn their they when because they're so easy not it's so easy to just not earn your money yeah. in Hollywood. Yeah. It's so easy to go it's into most a room. People. Most of the people just sit in a room and just go, you know, I gotta be honest, I'm gonna I'm gonna say this. I think we'd use a person of color. And yeah. th- that's what their n- one note is. And yeah, you're like, like, yeah, we were already thinking of that fuck face. Yeah. And they're like, it's so funny. I don't even, that doesn't thank, even come. Thanks for weighing in. Yeah. Okay. I'm, well, I said it. I said it. So uh, I'm going to go get my BMW. You're like, just fucking be creative. Help me be creative. And then obviously we're going to do the right thing when it comes to casting. But, but fucking help me be creative. How many black people do you have in your new project? Considering it's your money. Yeah. When you put your money in your mouth is. Okay. How many trans black females do you have in your... F- <laughs> I can tell you. Is that, Hannibal in your thing? No. For real? No, I have. Um, let's see. You know, Hannibal does, just does a lot of music now these late, lately. He does. He's days. making music. He's yeah, making and he's music. fucking good. He's talented. Yeah, Hannibal's super talented. Hannibal's, Hannibal's a fucking fascinating dude. Definitely. And it's definitely somebody who goes, I'll do this on my own. Hannibal yeah. is a, Hannibal's a, don't worry, I'll earn my BMW from myself kind of motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, how many black people are in this project? I'm counting in my head right now. Really? Yeah. They're not, well, one, two, three, four. Nice. Yeah. Wait, you know, Tommy. Yeah. yeah. And there are. There's, you've never had a blind spot to race, though. Like, no, you've never been, like, I'm tone deaf. No, there's Asians, there's Latinos, there's. Uh, but you are Latino. The elderly. There's. Oh, that's right. I've seen your videos. I know what you like. A lot of elderly. <laughs> there is some. I mean, I think you're gonna you're gonna cry. Did you it. give it to your managers and agent? No, they have been because they. I told them what I was doing, and they're like, "When do we see it?" And I'm and like, now we've actually we've shot every like first we shot like, everything shot everything shot. It's it's I go. We need another probably eight weeks of post. So at this point, like seven weeks in post. Um, and then they're they're chomping at the bit. They're like, we want to see it. We want to see it. We want to see it. I go, yeah, you're you're gonna see it. Don't worry. I'll, you're the first people I'll send it to. Um, first person I ever met. What's that? I'm very excited about it. First person I ever met who doubled down on himself. Dane Cook. Dane, Louis. Yeah, Dane. With Dane did an amazing job of that. He he was the one who was like connect to people, connect to fans, reach out to them. He would. He also four-walled arenas on a tour. I don't know if a, lot, if a lot of people know that. For real. So you go, like, when when most of us as comedians tour, whether it's a theater or an arena, a promoter, you work with a promoter, right? Yeah, And you get the deal, and there's, like, here's your guarantee, here's your here's your back end, here's, like, you know, here's the breakdown. Four-walled arenas. He would just go, like, what's it cost to rent the United Center? And they'd be, like, you know, Three hundred and fifty thousand dollars. That's got to be more than that, right? Well, I'm just making up yeah, a number. Yeah, yeah, but then yeah, he would yeah. be like, "Here's the check. See what it's, it's costs to that. rent Madison Square Garden. That's one of the most expensive. That's ones. actually the most expensive yeah, one. Yeah, that's a very expensive. There's actually uh, uh, the um, uh, the Amelia Center in in Florida, Tampa. There's a lot of times that I'm people, doing the Amelia oh, Center. I haven't announced it yet. People do the uh, the garden and don't make money sometimes. For real? Yeah. That was, that was in 2006. To rent Madison Square Garden. So well, that was Barclays. Yeah. So then, okay, but hang on. When you four wall something, yeah, you are just running the space. You haven't gotten all the employees and everything, right? Um, because that I know for a fact you're. It doesn't. You're just running the space, and then on the money you make, you got to pay out everybody. Probably, yeah. I mean, it's much cheaper to rent Barclays. That's which is why a lot of acts are going there when they do their New York plays. Oh, uh, you know, I wondered, Sebastian did Barclays, and I was like, wow. He actually can, he's so popular in that New York area that he, he did an arena tour in the New York area. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did, he did like a Newark arena, arena, a Barclays arena, a Madison Square Garden, like he did, he did all of them. Can I tell you what I'm doing on my tour? Yeah. I'm going to soft pitch it to you. I, 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 I gotta, I'll just tell you after, because I don't want to fucking. Okay. This is what you're doing on tour? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm. I I don't want to do. I don't. I'll just. I'll just wait. I'll wait. I'll tell you the name of the tour. 
Wait, is it a new tour? Yeah, I'm doing a tour. Starts January. Okay. Starts January. I told you where I'm in January. Yeah. Yeah. Are you doing a new hour? New hour. Yeah. New hour. You have it already? Yeah. I have fucking three hours. I was I toured all through the pandemic. I have fucking so much material. I got to get rid of shit. So, uh, so yeah, I have a new hour from just going to Europe with the girls. I'm calling it the, I'm calling it the, and I'm hitting all. Mm-hmm. For real? <laughs> you really going to do that? I swear to God. I swear to God. I swear to God. How long will this last? It's going to take a while. <laughs> I came up with the other night in bed. And I was like. I was like. Because I, like I like the font of the tour name. Because yeah, yeah. the font's in the, in the emoji. You know what I mean? So the font. I like the font of the tour name. And then. Uh. And then I, you know how many people uh, live in one of them? Yeah, yeah, not a lot. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Does your team know about this? Yes, what do they, they think? I hate it. I hate it. <laughs> I love it so much. I get so fucking excited for that. And when will you announce that? Uh, <laughs> I just announced when I announced that I, what, October 10th. That's when you're going to do it? I guess. Or is I that when know. this comes out? Oh, no, no, I, no, no, no. They just said that we're going to have to announce earlier. So. No, I, I won't. It'll be soon. Yeah, um, uh, I, I I'll give you. I'll tell you when I get done. I'll tell you numbers of what that's going to cost to do that. I'll tell you now, based on the tour that I've been on and continue to do. Yeah, fucking don't. <laughs> it's a terrible idea. You don't need to do that. Let's go back to my questions, Tom. Okay, we were talking about inspiration, and we covered. Uh, fitness, sex, and um, like comedy stand up. Um, and you're and we talked about your new your new um, your new show. So when yeah. you get done with that, I have a plan for it. Really? Well, the because you could release it just on your website. It's it's an option. So I would I, I would just do that. And I, by the way, I would so I would do that and then just keep making that. Like because because here's the thing that I don't. Here's the thing that bums me out. Right. Yeah. Very candidly, and I hope this doesn't come off wrong to anyone, but like the cabin was a very big success. Mm -hmm. And uh, the cabin, for people who don't know, is the show that you made on on Netflix. On Netflix, yeah. It was was, uh, trended in the top 10 uh, on Netflix. It was the the highest rated non scripted series they had for a period of time. Um, And it was fun as fuck to do. And I. And we got kind of fucked on the pandemic because they weren't green lighting anything. So we went into the pandemic. Like it aired during the pandemic. Mm-hmm. But like I'm bummed that like I'm powerless to do that again. Like I like like now people at Netflix would be like, oh, yeah, we did do it. But it was, it was so long ago. I don't know if it's going to have the same audience and whatever. Like it's just, you know, it's like it's not. I'm certain if I walked into Netflix and sat down, I was like, I want to do another season of The Cabin. They'd be like, yeah, let's do it. And maybe they would. But I'm power. I hate. I hate that I'm powerless to it. That I can't just decide to start doing the cabin. Oh right. Like because I, I loved it. I had a lot of fun doing it, and I would love to do another season. I would love to do another season on a fucking boat and have the cabin be inside. Like I'd love to do. I'd love to do my own. No, not do my own thing, but I would love for Netflix to be like, yeah. you know, yeah, of course. But obviously, it's got to go up the thing, and then they're like, "What well, was so long ago? Do people remember it?" Like there's a lo- bunch of analytics that go yeah. in, yeah. and that's what I love about doing your own thing. Is that everyone goes that you get to decide if you get picked up for a second season? Yeah, exactly. Like I don't, I never liked getting the decision of getting picked up for a second season. That always gave me anxiety. Yeah, and that's why I, it's one thing I hated about Travel Channel. What's the matter? You need a piece of paper? Yeah, I need to write something down. Um, Austin, can you grab me a piece of paper? You're just writing on one of those hundreds. Here, do you want to write it? I got, I got, I got this my big ass calendar from Jesse Sweetser. Look at this. What's this? This is his. This is his thing. So this is your months, right? Don't get too close on me. I'll show you the cut on it. So the months are on the back. I cut it in half because I was already done half the year when yeah. you sent it to me. Yeah. But it's really big. It goes on your wall. Yeah. And uh, it's called the the big ass calendar. And then these are the months on the back. And then he's got the months written out straight lined here, so you can see your month like linearly, lin- linearly. Mm-hmm. And I've, I really fucking love it. It looks like a book, but you can take it with you. And for me, it's more fun to write stuff down. What are you writing down? No, nothing. It's for after. Okay. Um, uh, but I love that. I love Wait, the... Wait, where do you get inspiration from? Where do you get inspiration from for stand-up? 
uh, the girls and my and Leanne. Like, just I don't know. I think I don't like I, I mishear things a lot. Yeah, <laughs> that makes me that and that makes me giggle. Yes. And so that's a big thing about stand up is I mishear things. Yeah. Um, I like what were we? It is funny how they just fuel stuff. Like my my boys. Yeah. Do. They just. It's kind of killing me because I actually yeah. was thinking when Ali goes to college, I may retire from comedy. Because I don't, what am I going to write about? Yeah. Like they're gone. They're dead. They're dead? To me. Because yeah. they went to college? Yeah. And they left me with her. What, it's just me and her. What cool. do you think you're going to do? Drink. What, uh, what are we going to do? You, you know what? Last night we went to fucking dinner. Yeah. And Leanne's cool with being quiet, which is fine. Which yeah. is fine. If you're in a library yeah. or in a DMV. But when you're out with your husband, it's just me and her, and we're not drinking. She's just like this. And I went, say something. She's like, I don't have anything to say. I was like, okay. So when our food comes, I go, and I like this Mexican restaurant. Yeah. It's called Tequila's. Mm-hmm. I said, how, how was your, uh, uh, your whatever she got? And she, enchiladas. And she goes, okay. I went, that's not how life works. You got to really kind of glow it up. I, I took a video of my 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 fajitas were phenomenal. They were the best fajitas I've ever had in my entire life. I've never had a better fajita. Shrimp fajitas, the perfect amount of shrimp. I they evenly like sometimes they'll give you eleven shrimp. You're like, no, yeah. it needs to be twelve shrimp. So I get yeah. six in one and six in the other. Yeah. And I ate all the vegetables. The vegetables were runny. They were like crisp and yeah. like they were done well. And their sauce is awesome. And the, and 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 they gave me. I mean, everything was amazing about this meal. That's how I answer the question. What do you? How did you like yours? They're okay. Not my favorite. And do you see a future of just conversations? I like just that? Go, well, I got to teach her how to fucking. Either that or she's about to start partying balls and doing coke or something like yeah. to like step it up. Yeah, you know, because like you live this life with. I know that people get shitty when I talk about Leanne like this on this podcast. Literally, I get DMs like, "Bro, Leanne's a f- I, love, I love her like her podcast more than yours." Yeah. Seriously, Bert, I think you have real issues with your marriage. You need to be marriage counseling. Yeah. I'm fine. Okay, trust me, I'm fucking fine. But I will say that like. When you have kids, there's all this razzle dazzle around you. Yeah. There's all this excitement, all this. Well, shit, someone spilled her. Can we get another water? Hold on one second. Okay, yeah. she's snorting her the water out of her nose now. It's yeah. coming out. Like there's so much excitement with kids that when they even like now, like last night, we you know the funnest thing we were doing was tracking the girls on Life 360. We're like, oh shit, they're they're at sushi. They're getting sushi. We should yeah. have gotten sushi with them. Guess what? What? Just, just to put this in. 14 years from now, Julian will go to college. You have 14 years full of fucking sha. Yeah. Just like, Dad, okay, I don't want you to be mad. Like, those are the best. Those are already, those happen yeah. all the time. Yeah. Call, uh, phone calls. Dad, I know you're on the road. I don't want to bother you. Okay, how would we get a penny out of Julian's nose? Like, <laughs> like those phone calls are coming. Those yeah. are the best things yeah. in life. And then... And then uh, like we thought Leanne was pregnant in Italy. And I was like, fuck yes. You did? Oh, I did. Yeah, yeah. She didn't think she was. She was like, uh, but we did. She didn't have a period. And I was like, and I just was like, oh, I'm having a little girl. And we're naming it Italia. And and we're going to have fucking, we'll name it Roma. And it, we'll just Would you be it. super jacked to have a, a, a kid yeah, right now? Yes. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. I would love to have a kid. Because I'm not done being a parent. I just started, really. Like, I feel like I just started. Now they're going and they're, it's like Georgia comes in here and it's like hanging out with an adult. Yeah. But Isla. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That fucking kid. I saw that clip with you and Santino where he, you were like, you know, she came in, she was like, you know that it was Hail Hitler and not Hey Hitler? <laughs> <laughs> she was the one when we were, when we were, I didn't know. Okay, this is a fun game. Okay. Did you? I'm going to say before Jesus or after Jesus, and okay. you got to tell me if that happened, okay? Okay. Dinosaurs. Way before. How many years? Several hundred thousand. Uh, yeah. 35 million. Yeah, many, many, many. Mi- I thought it was like 5,000 years before Jesus. I thought it was like dinosaurs, then Jesus, than everything else. I didn't know there was stuff. I thought it was right up to there? I thought it was dinosaurs, then Adam and Eve, Jesus, and everything. I didn't know there was anything in between dinosaurs and Jesus. Okay. I thought it was Jesus, 
than everything else. Okay. And Isla, I've never seen this child laugh harder in her life. She goes, I can't believe you're my dad. She goes, you thought, she goes, what about Mesopotamia? And I was like, is that, is that before Jesus? And she goes, it's the birthplace of man. And I went, so that's before Jesus. She's like, yeah, Julius Caesar, before Jesus or after Jesus? Julius Caesar. First of all, did you know he was real? Yeah, he was a Roman emperor. Right? I thought he was a play by Shakespeare. Like King Lear. That's not a real dude, right? King Lear? Google if King Lear is a real dude. Julius Caesar, before or after Jesus? It's a good question. I can't say that I know the answer. I found out. Is it after? Before. Like 35 years before. 35, okay. Like, he could have known Jesus. Maybe it's 400 years. Something like that. But, like, like uh, the, his... Uh, the, the biggest Roman emperor. Like, I learned all this in Italy, and I kept just going. Oh, King Lear was a real person. Okay. So apparently, like, Shakespeare wrote. Ju so Julius Caesar was just like uh, like Joe Biden, right? Like, just a regular old yeah. guy. And then he dies. Yeah. Like, they stab him a few times. And then Shakespeare created Julius Caesar into the dude we know today. The reason we talk about Julius Caesar is because... Of Shakespeare. Shakespeare was a fucking gangster after Jesus, by the way. After 100 BC was Julius Caesar born in 100 BC, died in 40. So 44 years before Jesus was born, Julius Caesar died. Yeah. Isn't that fucking crazy? I never thought about it. Like it's, it, it overwhelmed me when I started going, here's what really fucked me up. So we go to the Vatican, right? And I'm like, and and I'm I buy you know I buy the Saint medals, mm -hmm. so I buy a Saint medal, and then I'm like, wait, is this a real person? Who? All of it. At the Vatican? I, like like I'm buying these Saint medals. And okay. I go, is this a it's a lady? Was this real? Because here's what's fucked up. We have exact history on Julius Caesar. Exact history on Julius Caesar. Sure. We've got exact facts mm -hmm. on on. Alexander the Great, before Jesus or after Jesus? Alexander the Great, uh, after. Before Jesus. Before Jesus. Was it? Yeah. Uh, uh, fucking, dude, it gets so, so uh, Attila the Hun, before Jesus or after Jesus? After Jesus. Oh, Alexander yeah. the Great, way before Jesus. Yeah. Attila the Hun, after Jesus. Yeah. We've got Hungarian exact Empire. facts on these motherfuckers. Right. Uh, Julius Caesar dated Cleopatra. We know this. He dated her. She's the one that said to him, technically, you got to become an emperor. Fuck being a leader. You need to run this shit. Yeah. Be a dictator. We have exact facts on him. This, this and, is all you picked up on your Italian trip? Yeah, and then, and then when it gets to Jesus, we're like, well, you know, kind of. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm sitting there as a guy who's got his, I'm in the Vatican with yeah. his fucking cross on my were chest. Were you respectful in the Vatican or were yeah, you yeah, like yeah, loud? Yeah, yeah. And... Hardcore, 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 hardcore. Very, very respectful. And uh Did you make the sign of the cross? Oh, like a hundred times, saw double numbers. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, all yeah, that yeah, was yeah, fucking yeah. I was out of my mind. My girls did not give a fuck. Because and then I'm sitting there going like so Saint Peter, he's it's, he's buried here. He was killed here, right? And they're like he's buried here and they're like and she's like we're we're pretty sure it's him. And I'm like, hold on. We know exactly where fucking Julius Caesar is. How do we right. kind of know where this guy is? She goes, well, you know, I don't know. You know, kind of, eh, things are weird with it. With, the, you know, but it's like, it's like, how do, and this, this really fucked me up because I'm, I, I see myself as a guy who believes in God and, and, and I have faith or whatever. I'm not, I don't go to church and I'm not like that uh, fucking Bible thumper. Yeah. But like, there are exact facts on everyone in history. But Except, then you got then you got like and then Moses was like, hey, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, because there's so much, you know. There's actually, you know, what it is is that the Bible is full of kind of birdisms, like some exaggerations to make the story better. Now you got me listening. Yeah, I mean that's <laughs> when I was 33, I got killed by the Romans. Here's how it happened. <laughs> that's exactly what's going on. I grew up in Jerusalem. I wasn't a very good student. <laughs> I was going to be a fucking, what do you call those guys? That, carpenter. You know, carpenter, but then I was yeah. like, fuck it, my dad's God. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. My mom didn't even fuck my dad. I just showed up. I mean, we have these weird facts about Jesus yeah. that, that do not exist with anyone else. Yeah. Anyone else. 
Everyone else were like, he was born this. They don't even know when Jesus was born. You know that? Or where. And yeah, what, yeah. They don't have like any of these facts. Yeah. And I was, and I got so fucked up in the Vatican. It would be so great because there's all these takes on it, which are pretty accurate that the way that we, that Jesus is depicted is so far off from what it, it should have been. They be. said, they go, we're pretty sure he was a, actually a real man. And I went, uh, hold on one second. There are priests. What do you mean we're pretty sure? What are yeah. you fucking talking about? You don't even know if he was a real... It, He's probably dark-skinned, dark he, hair. But, but Julius Caesar wasn't. No, no, I know, but I'm saying that the way that Jesus is depicted in a lot of Western society, at least, is like blondish brown, blue eyed. <laughs> so he'd be playing for the like, end one team. <laughs> he looks like like Chris Hemsworth, and people are like, yeah. "That's Jesus." And it's like that's not what Jesus looks. Show like. me a picture of Jesus. Like we know Michelangelo. Did you know his name was not Michael Angelo? Yeah, I thought it was Michael Angelo. Yeah, I, I, no, that I did know. Um, not not now, a lot. Do, of... See, like like that image right there. That's like a it's like a movie star. He looks right? like Chris Hemsworth. Yeah. So now do he looks perfect. do what um, Google search what Jesus Black Lives Matter is what, Jesus what Christ. Jesus Christ probably really looked like, you know. That's Ooh. probably what JC looked like. For real. Yeah, but people are like, I don't want to pray to that guy. <laughs> that guy looks like he changes tires. I want to get somebody that's a little more attractive. That's what Jesus looked like, probably. But it's not like it's your, just your like, reaction. By the way, tells a lot. You're like, do you think they really think that's a Jesus? Yeah, because right, of, but, it's like, but it's like it's like it's like it's like seeing Superman bro. your whole life, and then they're like, uh, let me get a dozen glaze, and I'll try a couple of the uh, <laughs> of those chocolate donut holes. Can I get some of those? Hey, we got a wax and a shine. Thirty minutes, no longer. Yeah. It's, uh, they really did a good job punching up Jesus. Yeah, of course. So wait, like so. Go back to go back to ethnic Jesus. What's up, dog? <laughs> Guy looks like a fucking cage fighter. He looks like he runs a body shop. He's like he does look like a, he runs a body a, shop. A, there's a dent. I'm gonna have. I could buff it out, but if you really want it to be. Look right. How, but how do they know that's what Jesus really looked like? Well, they're they're basing it. They on... They don't even know he's a real guy. They know he's a real guy. They know he's a real guy. Uh, they don't even know the dinosaurs are real. Wait, wait, wait. Hold wait, on. Wait, wait. I, but because you know they guess on dinosaurs. They, I, this is all the stuff that happened. You to mean me. like carbon dating? No, no. So when I found out, this is what my daughters told me. So wait, wait, wait. This, this is why, though. By the way, so it's the 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 area that he was from, right? Like yeah. that actual geographical area. What people would have looked like. He was a what did I say a, a, a Jewish man, about thirty years of age, who lives in this time period in this area. This is what people would have looked like. That's why they go. This is more realistic. How tall was he? That I've never. I bet he's five three. No, the average height of a man back then was like five five three. Really? Yeah. Julius Caesar was like five four. Like everyone was tiny. Uh, let's see. In 2001, a forensic anthropologist, Richard Nair, created a model of G Galilean man for BBC documentary, Son of God, working on the basis of an actual skull found in the region. Okay, so they did not claim it was Jesus' face. It was simply meant to, pro pro to prompt people to consider Jesus as being a man of his time and place since we are never told he looked distinctive. He, they never were like, he was a good-looking the, yeah, dude. Like, he's an average-looking dude. Hey, see how tall Jesus was? Those crucifixes were only like, Six feet big. It's such a brutal like way this. to fucking die. Dude, uh, St. Peter asked to be crucified upside down. Yeah. So he went because he wasn't worthy of being crucified the same way as Jesus. Yeah. That was, was his rationale. They said the best thing you could do to someone, he was 5'5". Five, five. Jesus was 5'5". Five, five. He's the same height as Rogan. <laughs> huh? Wait, Jesus does kind of look like Joe Rogan if he had a full head. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's not. <laughs> Rogan grows a full beard like that. Put a wig on Rogan. I guarantee you he looks just like Jesus. Jesus was jacked, right? I don't know if he was jacked. He did kettlebells. They Sleeved said in that. tattoos. Sleeved, yeah. Sleeved up, yeah. <laughs> Sleeved up. Yeah. The, uh, so dinosaurs, the dinosaurs are. We definitely know the dinosaurs were real. Yeah, but they don't know if that's what they looked like. No, but I mean, like, sometimes there's complete no, fossils. No, there's not. That what was what mean? I found out. There's not that I I thought when you go into a 
when you go into uh, uh, a museum and you see the 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 T Rex, yeah, you're like, oh, cool. They dug it. They were like, oh shit, here's no, a toe. You're right. And they dug the whole T Rex, and it's like sitting there like Sometimes this. Sometimes there are there are a few fossils, and they 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 basically complete how they imagine this would all go together. Yeah. But they found almost completed fossils of dinosaurs before. Uh, sure. Have they seen full? Yeah, not d- just thistles. So they find the face, right. and then they're like, it pretty much looked like this. But they'll find then the a toe. Yeah, but and no. A but leg. when you go to a museum. That's not all dinosaur bones. Right, right, right. They got like one dinosaur bone, and then they go, oh, and the rest is pretty much this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Which I kind of agree with, too. I look, think look at that one right there. What is that? Can you, can you make that one larger? That's a full. Complete T-Rex rediscovered put on display with nearly complete Triceratops. That's fucking insane. Found that's, like that? They found that. That's real. And that was three, 30, 350 million years ago. <laughs> Something like that. Ew, you're so good at this. Do you think you could get into digging up dinosaurs? I bet. I bet if you. I bet if you just randomly found one, like meaning you're in your backyard, you're like digging a hole, and then you find a toenail. I bet if you find one, you get addicted. You're like, I bet they're everywhere. You probably do, but it, it it'd be all about like who you buddied up with. You'd have to have like a friend who was like, you want to go fucking look for some dinosaurs. Doing it solo is not the way to do it, you know? Yeah, would you just go to a park? Like, I guess yeah. one's here. Yeah. And like... dinosaurs are fuel, correct? What? Dinosaurs are fuel. What do you mean? The reason we have gas is because dinosaurs, right? I don't follow. Dinosaurs decompose, decomposed, and then that created, like, oil, right? Or something? I don't think so. Just edit that out. Um, <laughs> all right. I thought you were making a fossil fuel. What's I was not, but I thought what are fossil fuels? Yeah, so dinosaurs are fuel. Okay. Hmm. Put this in the list of shit I don't really understand. Did you know that it's the moon is made out of green cheese, not cream cheese? Green cheese? What That's do you mean? The quote. But you ever it, heard that you ever heard that thing, that old quote? The moon's made out of cream cheese. No, I've never heard that, actually. Type that in. But, I mean, the moon is a big rock. I know, but I always thought the moon is made out of, I I thought it was made out of cream cheese. Okay. It's the moon is made out of green cheese. It was never an actual historical popular belief that the moon is made of green cheese. It was typically used as an example of extreme credulity, a meaning that was clear and commonly understood as early as 1638. The moon is made of green cheese. I'd never heard uh, of that. Well, I thought it was made out of... Type in cream cheese. I thought it was made out of cream cheese. I thought it was the moon is made out of cream cheese. Oh, so and the quote is a statement referring to the fanciful belief that the moon is composed of cheese. Yeah, because of, I've heard the cheese reference before. Yeah, but I'd never... type in cream cheese. Yeah, I thought it was the moon was made out of cream cheese. Yeah. And it's green cheese, which makes no fucking sense. Not that... I guess on some nights it looks green. Right? I have I no know. fucking idea. I thought cream cheese. I thought it was made out of... It's. Do you think Andrew Huberman and Lex Friedman would hear this and be like, these guys are fully fucking <laughs> R-worded? <laughs> I bet, I guarantee you, I bet, bet both of them look at us like we're geniuses. How so? We're not burdened with all the shit they know. They know oh. a bunch of shit that no one gives a fuck about. I wouldn't say that. I think No one gives a fuck about science? i would say i would say i don't care about science well that, that's why like that's why they have followings those guys no no i no, i know that some people do right but i guarantee you they would look at us and be like they are totally untethered <laughs> they are not they're not close they're not attached to reality they're not attached to i think they would be like we really need to teach more <laughs> <laughs> this is what's out there these fucking adults yeah i bet we it would be like a uh, it's like we just have a different skill set than yeah, they do. Yeah, but that's, that is true. We have a different skill set. I have a very, very, very... Like, I bet there's things that you'd talk to Andrew Huberman about, and he'd be like, no, no. Like, like uh, tequila being healthier than vodka. He'd be like, that's actually not a thing. And I'd be like, well, 
I've tried. Look it. at my recovery. Yeah, yeah, look at my recovery. I'm in the green. Yeah. I and but I I bet there's I bet there's things that I, what could we teach them? Like what if we if what if we had a TV show where we taught lessons to br- brilliant people, but we we taught them our lessons. Uh, what would the lessons be that we would be teaching though? Hmm. Uh, bel- uh, blind faith. That's it. Just bet on yourself, bro. Bet on I mean, black. It, okay. Ready? Yeah. Think about this. No disrespect for Andrew Huberman and Lex Friedman. Okay. On paper, of course they're successful. Right. They're, they're geniuses. Yeah, they have great. As a matter of fact, I would say they're kind of falling short of their potential, in my opinion. <laughs> we yeah. have surpassed our potential. This is a really good point. Right? Yeah. We're like we're like the guy with no legs that wins the race. These guys have like been given grants and have degrees and, and they're, they're profess- geniuses. Yeah. They're geniuses. Yeah. Find out what Lex Friedman's IQ is. I guarantee you, I, I got him by like sixty points below. You ha- below, oh, below, okay. below, <laughs> below. Okay. I want to take an IQ test with Lex Friedman. What's Lex Friedman's IQ? You know, he's someone who's got an IQ. Like he's yeah. he's done definitely taking an IQ test. Probably he's probably embarrassed about how high it is. I wonder if we can. I wonder if do you think. Do you think Lex Friedman, if I text him on Instagram right now, he would be like, he'd be like, you know what he would do? He'd be like, he'd be like, he hey, would, yeah. he would, he would minimize the importance of IQ results. He'd be like, well, the thing is, Bert, IQ isn't really that important. I scored a two twelve. Doing a podcast with Tom currently, and we'd love to talk to you on the phone if you have a second. Tom Segura, he's a comedian. <laughs> Lex Friedman is probably uh, how much do you want to bet Lex Friedman is a dude who checks his Instagram once at the end of his day. Yeah, he's probably not as a treat. Yeah, as like a Huberman hmm. too. What do you think his IQ is? It's probably pretty high. Calling him, texting him right now. Hey Andrew, doing a podcast with Tom Segura. And we'd love to ask you a question if you have availability to hop on the phone right now. Those are the two geniuses we know. Yeah. Oh, Louis C.K. just texted me. Hey, Bert, you're my inspiration. That's Jeez, so crazy. Wow, that is crazy. Um, uh, how much fun was having Louis on your podcast? So fun. He was great. It was it's fun those... when you watch a guy like that who's just, he's untethered. Like, I'm, I'm certain Like I'm certain if, like, Lex hung out with Louis. Oh, I take that back. Louis is pretty... He's actually really intelligent. Yeah. Like, really. he's, like, book smart, too. Like, he's, like, have you ever seen his podcast with Shane Gillis about the presidents? No, I heard about it, though. He knows everything about the presidents. Yeah, he's, well, he has, like, a lot of specific knowledge, and he's also, he's a pretty wise guy. Let's play a game. Okay. Let's play a game. Okay? It's called okay. Presidential Tap Out. Oh, I don't know shit about that. Halston, them. pull up the presidents on your thing so we can't see them, okay? Just don't look. Okay. So, pull up the presidents. Pull them up, and we're going to name presidents until we one of us can't name a president anymore. You mean in, in chronological order? Nope, just a president. Oh, okay. A president. Okay. And then the first person who can't name a president, it goes back to the next person. He's got to name a president in order to tap them out. Okay. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Everyone play along with us. Do you have the presidents? Okay. Okay, shall I go first? Yeah, you go first. <laughs> Washington. What's his first name? George. Okay. You have to do the first name? Well, there's two of them, right? <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm just trying okay. to tell you for a loop. Grover Cleveland. Okay. I think I'm out. <laughs> Teddy Roosevelt. George Bush. Senior. It's George H.W. Bush. Same, same. Okay. George W. Bush. Ronald Reagan. Bill Clinton. Jimmy Carter. Richard Nixon. Barack Obama. John F. Kennedy. Donald Trump. Harry Truman. Did I say Andrew Jackson already? <laughs> uh, Abraham Lincoln. My hands are sweaty. Joe Biden. <laughs> um, Lyndon B. Johnson. Uh, Polk. Uh, Adams. Fuck. 
Did you already say Jimmy Carter? Uh, did you say? I got one. I got one. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, Adams. Did you say that? Yeah. You said Adams. Um, we did those. Hold on, hold on, hold on. My hands, are, my hands are sweating. Oh, this is bad. Um... Gerald Ford. Good one. Yeah. Betty Ford. Yeah. How many did we not get, Halston? Dozens. For real? There's 30. Hold on. Stop, stop, stop. Scroll. Okay. You guys got about like eight or nine of these. So how many presidents have we got? 52? No, no. 46. 46? Yeah. We got 30. No, there's 30 left. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because we got we got the well. We, there's there's okay. There's FDR. The you took pick Teddy Roosevelt. There's FDR, right? Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Okay. Then there's um. There's from the Whig Party. Well, we, as I'm saying, we missed like the entire 1800s. <laughs> oh, those guys are all fucking ham and eggers anyway. You guys named about 18 total. So then so let's see who we forgot. Wow. Go to the very top. Very top. First one is George Washington, we right? That, we got yeah. that guy. And then Adams, should have been our, right? You want to go the other direction? Yeah, yeah, that's the bottom. Yeah, but start there. We'll it's it's like the Drake top. said, go, we go from the bottom to the top. Okay. John Adams, okay? Yeah, we yeah, got yeah. the first two. Thomas Jefferson, we, we did, did not get we Thomas didn't, Jefferson. We didn't say Thomas Jefferson. You didn't? James Madison, we James didn't Ma get. That's embarrassing. Ashley Madison, I know. James Monroe. Monroe. Yeah. John Quincy Adams. It's kind of the one I was guessing at. Andrew, Andrew Jackson, Jackson we said. Van Buren. Never heard of William Henry Harrison. Okay. Never heard. Was he assassinated? Looks like he. That, and it's a wig. He was a wig. Yeah. John Tyler. Tyler, Tyler two. Pope. Tipper Canoe and Tyler two. Tipper Canoe and Tyler two. Is that it? Tipper Canoe and Tyler two? Don't know. Tipper Canoe. Okay. Uh, Polk, I would yeah. have thought of. Zachary Taylor. Nope. White privilege. Miller Millard Fillmore. Fillmore? Yeah. Is that what the Fillmore is named after? I don't think so. Franklin Pierce, nothing. I've never heard Buchanan. of that guy. I have no Buchanan is. It, we're, now we're at Abraham Lincoln. Those oh, are I all can't before. believe I didn't fucking say Grant. Oh, Ulysses S. Grant? Yeah, that's a... Rutherford B. B. Hayes. James Garfield. Garfield's a good one. Yeah. I would have known that. Chester A. Arthur. No idea. Copperpot. Grover okay, Cleveland. We got Benjamin Harrison. Benjamin Harrison. Cleveland Grover again. Cleveland again? He's yeah. pulling the Donald Trump? William McKinley. <laughs> Grover Cleveland pulled the Donald Trump. Yeah. And then we're now McKinley, we're, we're more, Roosevelt. Oh, we didn't get Taft? Taft. Jesus. Woodrow Wilson. Also. Harding. Harding. Coolidge. Coolidge. Coolidge is a good one. Herbert Hoover. All right, FDR. Now, now from here, Truman, we're Truman. Eisenhower. Did we get Eisenhower? Yeah. We, uh, yeah. Kennedy. Yeah, we got Lyndon those. Lyndon B. Johnson. Yeah, Nixon. Yeah, Ford. Nixon. We didn't, yeah, we, I yeah, didn't we got say Nixon. Nixon. We got Nixon. I said Nixon. Okay. Okay. That was really bad. Let's see if let's see if the two geniuses called us back. I'm driving. Who's that? Huberman. Call him right now. Hello. Andrew Huberman, you're live on Two Bears One Cave. First time caller. Me. First time caller. Big fan. Big time listener. Thank you for everything you do in the health and wellness uh, space. Science. Science. It's Bert Kreischer. You're here with me and Tom Segura. Thanks, guys. I've been told before that I look like each and both of you, so thank you. That's the nicest compliment I've ever got. Thank, uh, yeah. I, thank you very much, uh, Andrew. And I've been told that I look like a, a less attractive version of you, so thank you very much. You guys represent my beard growth goals, but uh, we can talk about the biology of beard growth all we want or not. Um, but anyway, great You're, to connect. I know okay. we have a lot of common friends. Uh, we, have, we have a lot of questions for you. For, first off, I'm just... And first of all, I have to get you on my podcast. I want to talk about alcohol. I know that Ditto. We, we we everyone wants you on your pod, on our podcast. You are all me and my trainer talk about. The only reason I spend time in a sauna and a polar plunge is because of you saying like three days and three days is the way to go. Yeah, I'd be delighted to come on. I'm a big fan of both of your work. We have a lot of friends in common, and it would be uh, it'd be a pleasure. Okay, first question: Do you know your IQ? I do not know my IQ. Okay, do, do you? Do you put any importance into IQ? Any value? You know, the yeah, the history of IQ tests is 
such that, you know, it has some value in terms of predicting test taking performance in the academic setting, but you know, all the business that you've heard around emotional IQ and musical IQ and creative IQ being distinct from that, all that is true. I mean, I think what we can gather from 50 plus years of really good research is that the only thing that IQ tests predict uh, is performance on that specific IQ test. So okay. not to, I wouldn't put it as. Oh, he's driving. He's driving. He's driving That's driving. what's going on. Yeah. Are you there? Um, he's really good at talking. Yeah, I mean, he's been doing his podcast for. Oh, he just hung up on me. Well, he probably lost the signal. Yeah, he lost the signal. He's really good at talking. What like he's like, well, like he's a professor. When, yeah, but when you when you ask him something, yeah, he says the answer like in a full sentence. But he lectures. okay, Andrew, we got you. You there? Got it. Okay. Yes. Um. Okay. Real quick, Tom and I are trying to because we we've been talking a lot about you and Lex Friedman today. And we were talking about the differences between our quote unquote IQs versus your IQs and how, how I'm sure we bring something to the table, but we're not sure what it is. <laughs> so here's a question. Do you, did you, who do you, do you think Julius Caesar was alive before Jesus or after Jesus? Oh my goodness. You're, you're probing me on history. That sounds like a trick question. I, <laughs> I would imagine Julius Caesar would be alive after Jesus. It's before Jesus. Before okay, Jesus. see. Okay. okay, okay. All right, perfect, perfect. So how many presidents do you think you could name? Tom and I together could come up with 16. Oh, goodness. I, I could probably, I remember this little this little jingle from uh, elementary school where it was like, what was it, like George Washington, first president, then Tim, Tom Adams, um, Jefferson, Madison, then came Quincy Adams. And then I could probably list off some more recent ones, and I could probably, um, uh, I could say uh, two Bushes, um, a yeah. Trump, a Clinton, a, a uh, an Obama, a Carter, a Nixon, a. Uh, tell me right. what okay, you got it. You, you already beat us. You already beat us. And now, now Tom wants the phone. Uh, Hold on one second. Two, two things, uh, Andrew. Uh, two things that I've uh, taken based, uh, recently from you is that I'm trying to get. Uh, I try to get direct sunlight. Uh, Ten minutes. Like um, yep. uh, when I wake up and I, I feel much better about it. So thank you for, for sharing that tip. And the, the other one was that you shared um, about I don't cold plunge if I'm uh, strength training immediately afterwards because it kind of can, you shared this fact about it, it could sort of work against the, um, you know, the, the purpose, like your, your, your muscle building. Um, I'm, yeah, it's just to make sure that we're clear on this for your audience. So cold plunge immediately after, or I would say in the four hours after right. a workout, probably not a great idea. If your goal is to get the adaptation from that workout, the strength or the endurance, because the inflammation response is actually something you want. Right. But if your goal is just to recover so you can train more, then go for it. Okay. Cold shower is probably fine, but if you are really want to get down in the weeds about it, I would just avoid um, deliberate cold exposure um, by cold plunge or by cold shower. Uh, in the four hours, probably even in the four to eight hours after a uh, weight training workout or cardio workout that is designed to give you some sort of improvement in weight training or okay. cardio. Okay. And, right. and one last thing before I pass you back. Um, you know, Bert wanted to make sure dinosaurs were real, right? So I'm told. Okay. okay. Not, but not the whole thing. Hey, Andrew, uh, you are, you are uh, given one sentence you get to share with America about alcohol, what would that one sentence be? The data on alcohol indicate that not drinking any alcohol is better for you than drinking a little bit, despite what you've read. Fuck. And that most adults can, most healthy adults can safely consume. There we go. One to two drinks per week. Before the negative Andrew. effects of alcohol set to, start cut. to set in. You're cutting out. You're cutting out. You're cutting out. I can't hear you. <laughs> the negative effects of alcohol include, I'll just be really clear, um, very clear effects on increasing leaky gut, micro um, liver, obviously, increased cancer risk, uh, potential dementia risk. But look, I'm not here to, to dictate what people do and don't do. They should just know the risks. And everything that we do health-wise – um, is on a backdrop of the foundational things like getting enough sleep, getting sunlight, limiting stress, getting exercise, good nutrition, good social connection, et cetera, and genetics. So, you know, am I saying that somebody can't have four drinks a week and be healthy? No, 
I'm saying that most people would do well to drink far less alcohol or no alcohol. Sure. And to be clear, Bert's only one of those guys. He's like three or four times a week. So it's, it's not like he's that much more than the... There you go. Yeah. And so do, if you're, if you're going to do that, great. And, but um, do the other things, which you are doing. Um, and, and the form of alcohol probably matters, but... Uh, oh, okay. With tequila? You know, I if I'm gonna drink, I'm not a big drinker. But if I'm going to drink, I'm going to drink a white tequila with soda and lime, and I'm going to enjoy it. Boom, boom. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, Andrew. I'm going to tell you, I have a Fitbit, and and uh, my recovery if it's I drink tequila, a whoop. I'm sorry, I have a whoop. My recovery if I drink tequila is always in the green, and if I drink anything else, and like wine, red wine or vodka, I am in the red. Like I am horrible. Uh, do you believe that in? Makes sense. That makes sense. It probably matches your particular mode of, of alcohol metabolism. Um, and maybe we just need to name a drink the whoop. There yeah, go. yeah, I like this. How about psychedelics? Do you believe yeah, in Yeah, do you believe in psychedelics and marijuana? What are, you, what are your feelings on that? Well, I believe they exist. Um, here's the deal. The, <laughs> the, the, the data from clinical trials, well, first of all, I want to be really clear that these are still Schedule One drugs, meaning they are not um, the, the federal government in the United States still dictates that these have no medicinal purposes. That's the, that's the law. So I just want to be clear to people, if you get caught with these things, buying them, selling them, et cetera, you can go to jail. That's the law. Um, the clinical trials that are ongoing now, and mostly out of Johns Hopkins, indicate that psilocybin, certain modes of, of LSD and MDMA in the clinical setting, so working with a qualified clinician yeah. in the laboratory setting, have been shown to have pretty impressive effects on um, intractable depression, so people who can't break free of depression, mm. eating disorder, trauma, and, of course, um, MDMA may have potential uses as an empathogen for increasing connection and awareness. Now, th th all that on the backdrop of, A, they're being illegal. I'm not just saying this because I'm a university professor. I'm also just saying this because I do think that kids – and people whose brains are still developing, so 25 years and younger, need to be exceedingly cautious because, you know, just you don't want to freestyle all this stuff, right? This, if you're opening up neuroplasticity, you know, rewiring of the brain in the dramatic chemical setting, you know, it can go any which way. And I do know people who have benefited tremendously from psychedelics, and I do know a few who have also suffered tremendously in the aftermath. So you just have to be smart about how you're approaching it, and let's hope that um, before long, um, people will be able to do this in a legal clinical setting. I think that day is is soon to arrive. Well, Andrew, I, I got to tell you this. I I, I want to save this for when you're on me and Tom's podcast yeah. because, like, Tom's in Austin. I'm here in L.A. Whenever you're available, I, I really can't sp stress this enough. Huberman's Lab is one of the best podcasts out there. You give such great information, and you're so good at talking. You're so good at sharing that information in a way that morons like myself can bring it in. And granted, I kind of whittle it down and then share it drunk at a party. You got to do 20 minutes three times a week in a, in a hot like sauna. Got to get hot. You got to put, put towels on your head and then pull a plunge right away. Don't do it at night. Like, But you're so good at sharing that information that, uh, that thank you for having your podcast, man. I, I got to say that. And I say that on behalf of myself, my trainer, everyone in L.A. Like my, my, the other day, they're talking about shit. They're talking about like blue zones or something. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like yeah. so, you're fucking amazing, man. Yeah, Thank you, big fans, man. Really well, do appreciate it. Thanks for the kind words, guys. I, again, big fan of you both, and I know we're both we're all friends with Joe and Lex. It's, it's one Joe. of the great things about podcasting is that um, unlike science, where if one person publishes something, you sort of everyone else who's working on that suffers. In podcasting, the more that people talk to one another and the same subjects are covered, it's like a rising tide raises all boats, and so. I'm grateful for what you guys do. You make me laugh super hard. You make me think really hard. I, I sometimes I'd love to talk to you about comedy and we, we know a thing or two about how it impacts the brain, what's funny, what's not funny. Anyway, I'm not funny. What I do know, however, is you guys are really great at delivering information and making it um, approachable. And so thank you. I'm, it was great to get the, the cold call and um, you made my day. We'll talk soon. Hey, we'll talk soon, man. Thanks, Andrew. I have your number. I'll give you a text with me and Tom's number if that's cool. Terrific. I look forward to it. Awesome, Thanks, Andrew. Andrew. Thank you very much. Bye for He's so good at talking. Yeah, he, yeah, he is. Like, he right. sounds almost like um, he has like the, the like almost old school uh, Lex nightly Friedman. news. Lex Friedman. You ready? Anchor, Boom. yeah. Lex yeah. Friedman. We got Andrew Huberman and Lex Friedman on the podcast. By the way, we're a pretty good podcast. Just me. We're pretty good guests, too. Yeah, but yeah. like. Strasvutsi, Alex. Minyasvutbar. Ochimbriatna. 
Oh, that, that's, that's the best Russian you can do? Was that Russian even? <laughs> Lex, man, this podcast has been an homage to you. You, I, you're been on with me and Tom Segura. We're doing Two Bears, One Cave, and I got to tell you, first and foremost, we're fucking huge fans. Tom is a little upset that he hasn't Thank been you. asked to be on your podcast, but I did the best I could to interview him today the way you do interviews. You have great, thoughtful questions. Like you're Thank fucking you. killing it, dude. I like how you said Tom Segura, the comedian. <laughs> like I, I would be confused. <laughs> Which Tom is he talking? The skateboarder, the uh, yeah, I'm a huge fan of you guys. You guys are amazing. Hey, Lex, I live in Austin. Uh, Lex, do you, do you, Lex, do you live in Austin? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my know. God. Hey, I so cool kids. so first question, first question. Do you know your IQ? Uh, no, I don't. God I, damn it, I don't. Uh. Yeah, it's a really interesting question. It's really actually difficult to get to the IQ. You have to do multiple tests. Yeah. Uh, and just even the question about how to measure intelligence is a little, a little I, I don't know. But I think to do it right, you have to do a really thorough examination. I think so. I don't yeah, well, well, Tom and I don't have uh, don't have uh, very... Anyway, do you have... <laughs> <laughs> okay, second question. Second right. question. Do you yeah. think... Who do you think was born first, Julius Caesar or Jesus Christ? Oh, you can't do that. <laughs> you can't do that. This makes me feel so much you better. Can't. I thought, Lex, I thought it was dinosaurs, <laughs> then Jesus, then everything else. And then I found out that yeah. it's, it's there's some stuff in between dinosaurs and Jesus. Quite a few things. Well, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of people with different opinions on that, right? That dinosaurs aren't real? Are you about to say dinosaurs aren't real? Uh, no, of course, oh. <laughs> the dinosaurs are real, but the Earth is definitely flat. But that's another route. We should talk about that off, off the record. Yeah, yeah. What about and Bill Gates, man? To show you. <laughs> what about what? What about Bill <laughs> Gates? And he's fucking changing the weather, trying to inject us. Okay. Speaking of which, I was running along the river yesterday in Austin, and a guy ran up to me. He said, "Big fan. I got to talk about Bill Gates." That's the exact. And we and we walked together along the river. And talked about Bill Gates for for an hour. He told me everything that Alex Jones has told me. I oh. I'm clueless. To me, he is somebody is trying to use his money to help a large number of people in the world. And, yeah. Uh, but, but here, Lex, Tom, I'm giving it to Tom. I'm giving the I'm giving the photo to Tom. Yeah, that's because you're um you're a, an intelligent, reasonable person that doesn't buy into the nonsense <laughs> that uh, all these conspiracy theorists get excited about. Hey man, they're um, they're open-minded in a way that's important in a society. Because uh, you don't want to trust the powerful. That's what this country is built on. You don't want to trust what? The uh, the power centers, powerful people. Oh, you okay. To challenge them, you have to question them. So I, I like it. Yeah. But yeah, and on that one, I don't know. He's one of the most hated people uh, in America. Yeah, he's become he's become a very polarizing figure, but um. Yeah, I, I have uh, I have a lot of thoughts on conspiracy theorists, and they're they're not very positive. <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't know. It's fun though. It's fun. It's no, it's the, fun because it's fun because it entertains them, and they feel like they have some insight. But you know, they're mostly stupid people. Yeah, but we're all stupid relative to, to you know. Yeah, we're all stupid relative to you. But I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> No, man, we don't know what's going on at all. We don't know much about the world. All the progress that science has made, all the progress that technology has made, we still don't. We still haven't figured out most of what's going on around us. That's about true. The universe, about how the mind works. So it's good to be open-minded. Yeah, that. So not, yeah. Sure. All right, all right, Lex, okay. Lex, Lex. Next question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next question, and I have the answer. I want to see if you answer it right. What's the best podcast you've done? I'm very, very picky. Uh, I, 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 by the way, I have, uh, I have the right answer. I'm curious to see if you hit, have the right answer, if you and I have the same answer. Like, legitimately, you're asking me? Uh, yeah, I mean, listen, I'm a huge guy or fan of Rogan. I, I have to say, oh, yeah, Rogan's a good one. Oh, but you're talking about, you're talking about me talking on, on my podcast? On your you podcast, on your podcast. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. 
Well, there's a, there's a bunch of funny answers, but I got I got to say Elon. I mean, I'm a oh, uh, yeah, yeah, AI yeah. person. You, yeah. I'm sorry, you can't. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, outside of that, I mean, uh, your Dan Carlin one was pretty fucking awesome. Yeah, Dan Carlin is. Uh, Dan Carlin yeah, was like a, people you admire. Yeah, you're like, dude. You're I, I so admire, good. I admire you and Tom, and your voices have been in my head all the time. We had a one-way friendship, and I have that same connection with Dan Carlin. So to meet that guy in person, right? Meet your like imaginary friend, and then realize they're real. That was that was amazing. I listened to Dan Carlin last uh, night talk about uh, Martin Luther, and uh, King. yeah, no, no, not King. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hey, hey, uh, open invite uh, ever to do my podcast. You know that. And I'm dying to do your podcast. I want to see if I can make that date work that you hit me up. But same goes for Tom. I would love to see. I'd love to and, have you on too. And by the way, if you ever want to be a guest bear, please, Tom's in Austin. It's You are by far one of the most entertaining, interesting, thought thoughtful people on the internet. I love your podcast. I love everything you do. And and. And uh, and just keep it up, man. Thank you for calling us. Thank you, brother. Uh, work on that Russian a little bit, will you? Konyashna. Yes, no. <laughs> very well. Good job, <laughs> All right, that's uh, with Danya. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's with Danya. Right. <laughs> we got both of them. That's pretty awesome. That's pretty awesome. Um, Jennifer Anderson's texting me. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> hey, All we right. should. Okay, we should. We should. In closing. Yes. All right. In closing. Let's go. Let me make sure if there's anything I left off. I have so much stuff for our next podcast. Um, ooh, ooh, shit! You're right. All right, all right. It was a lot of fun. This was fun. This was yeah, fun. This was really good. Um, I can't wait to see your new project. I can't wait to ask you a question. Okay, okay. I love you. All right, love you too. Bye. Bye. Bert and Tom, Tom and Bert. One goes topless while the other wears a shirt. Tom tells stories and Bert's the machine. There's not a chance in hell that they'll keep it clean. Here's what we call Two Bears, One Cave. No scripts, a bit of booze, amateur protology. Dirty jokes, raunchy humor, no apologies. Here's what we call Two Bears, One Cave.